this video completely got lost in the shuffle. This problem originated, I scanned for codes, kind of started working on it, and so I've got a couple video clips here and there, but it really got lost in the shuffle. So this isn't gonna be a great diagnosis video, but I'll kind of run you through what I saw on this, the codes I saw, the symptoms I saw, and what the fix was and how to fix it. So, hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm driving along tonight here, and all of a sudden, Christmas tree lights up. We've got check engine light, the exclamation triangle, the uh, traction control light, and PCS light. And the cruise control doesn't work. If I'm moving, it doesn't engage. So it seems like something major. So I plug my scanner in. Uh, we've got <clears throat> a P171 system to lean to lean a P300 random multiple cylinder misfire, cylinder five misfire, cylinder seven misfire, and another system to lean. So, um, so I am going to uh, probably start out with the plugs I think have about 25,000 miles on them. Not a whole lot of miles, but I think what I might do um, maybe I'll take a look at it and maybe I'll swap some coil packs around and see if the problem switches cylinders. Maybe I'll just order a set of eight plugs and a couple coil packs. Um, I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do, but we're going to see what I can figure out. And I don't think there, there's, I should mention there's other codes in here. That's why there's other lights on, but I believe that it's all tied when I pull them up. I'm not going to spend too much time going through what all codes are in here, but when I pull them up, it's like engine device malfunction. So I think it's all tied and it all lit up at the same time. So I think it's tied to that check engine light. And right now it's running really smooth, but it was, it was idling rough. So I think I legitimately have a couple misfires. So some of the troubleshooting I did, now I don't have, um, I don't have a whole lot of info on this because like I said, this kind of got lost in the shuffle of everybody else's cars I was working on. But, uh, but I, I was getting a lean code. I actually pulled spark plugs out on both banks. There's a lean code for the passenger side bank. So I uh, pulled spark plugs out on both sides and it was obvious that it was an actual lean condition on the passenger bank. And there weren't a lot of things, you know, you could technically have a vacuum leak somewhere and you can use a can of brake parts cleaner to spray around the intake manifold or the intake boots or anything like that. Uh, but there's two separate air filters on this. There's even two separate mass airflow sensors, but they all come together. So, uh, so when only one bank is running lean, that sort of narrows it down. You don't have a whole lot of things. You could have a vacuum leak on that one bank, but... Uh, it would almost be odd, you know, it's not going to be a mass airflow sensor because they both come together. So, you know, you'd have a similar condition on both banks. So um, I didn't even monitor fuel trims. Like I said, this really got lost in the shuffle. But what I did wind up doing is I replaced both of the upstream oxygen sensors and, uh, and that resolved my problem. So I've put, uh, I don't know, I've probably put six, 700 miles on it since then. And it was bad, the code was popping up. Anytime I drive it, that code would pop up and disable cruise control and throw every light on the dash up. So it seemed like a pretty major problem uh, when in reality, I mean, it's an important thing, but it wasn't that big of a deal. However, changing out the sensors on this car is a little bit of a pain, but it's not as bad as it initially looks. You just can't be afraid to pull some stuff out of the way. So I'm gonna show you what I pulled out of the way to get to those oxygen sensors, those upstream oxygen sensors and, uh, and and show you what I did. I'm not actually gonna pull everything out, but I can point out what you need to get out of the way to get to those sensors. So if we head under the car here, we've got our catalytic converters and we've got this kind of underbelly pan shield, whatever you wanna call it here. Our oxygen sensors, I don't even know, let's see here. So you can see it right there, but our oxygen sensor is really kind of buried up in there on that side. And same deal, it's right there, right there on this side. But uh, it is, yeah, there we go. It, it's hard It's hard to even see them. So uh, short rundown of this, pull this pan off. There's a couple bolts um, on the back there. And I believe you just gotta pull those, these, I don't think needed to get pulled. Um, then you can drop that down. Then you've got the sway bar here and you've got 
This really is just a bracket that runs right here. There's two bolts there, and there's two bolts there, and then there's two bolts on the uh, bushing bracket. And so zip those off, same thing on the other side, zip those off, zip those off, all the same on the other side, and then you can drop these out. You can, if you want, pull this shield off, two 10 mil bolts right there, but you don't even have to. So it's actually quite simple. It takes you mere minutes to drop all that out of the way, and then you have a lot better access. It's still up there a ways. The plugs are a little tough to get to, but you can just see how much stuff comes out of the way really easily. You'd like to think you'd just pull this cover off and get to it, but that isn't the case. So that that's what I did. Uh, well worth a couple minutes to drop that stuff down. You can just let the sway bar hang and then you can get in there and swap those things out. So that is all there is to it. Just don't be shy on pulling stuff out of the way. So I can't say for sure that if you have a P171 code like I did, that you're going to have this exact same issue. It could be something else, but in my case, this is what it was. It was a relatively easy fix. I just threw two oxygen sensors in it. I can't remember. They weren't real cheap, but uh, I, I think I spent close to 300 bucks on the pair of them. So it wasn't a real cheap fix, but, uh, but oxygen sensors do occasionally need to get done. And, you know, you're, if you're driving one of these cars, you know it's an LS, it's, you know, the flagship Lexus, and the uh, maintenance and upkeep is not going to be as cheap as a Camry or a Corolla or something like that. So, you know, don't be afraid. I use Denso OEM sensors in it. Uh, don't be afraid to, to spend the bucks that you need to to keep these things in good running shape. Uh, the thing absolutely runs like a top now. Um, like I said, I've put, you know, I don't know, 700 miles on it or something and, and not a flaw to be found. So that was what my issue was and how I fixed it. So hopefully that helps you in diagnosing your troubles.